Hello and welcome everybody. Now, I'm by no means a journalist, but since we live in America and we don't have any real journalists in America, I mean quite literally, no matter what network you're watching, they're just doing political propaganda and covering up for big money interests, so we don't have any real journalists in America. So today, we're going to dive into the East Palestine train derailment and go over a few things the fake news media does not want you to know. On February 3rd, 2023, a Norfolk Southern 50 car freight train carrying hazardous material derailed in East Palestine, Ohio, causing a massive fire. Since the train was carrying hazardous material, firefighters couldn't even immediately address the blaze due to the train carrying hundreds of thousands of gallons of vinyl chloride. Vinyl chloride is a chemical used in PVC. Vinyl chloride is flammable, toxic, and declared a brain, lung, blood, and liver carcinogen. It is typically dangerous due to prolonged exposure, but it is especially dangerous when ignited. One of the most dangerous byproducts it can emit is phosgene and hydrogen chloride into the air. Phosgene is a highly toxic colorless gas with a strong odor that can cause vomiting and breathing trouble and was used as a weapon in World War I. Hydrogen chloride is a colorless to yellowish gas with a strong odor and it primarily affects human skin and it's declared a skin, nose, and throat irritant. And go ahead and take a look at this guys. Yeah, geez, it looks like somebody detonated a nuke in Ohio. The solution they came up with dealing with this situation was a controlled release of the chemicals. Ohio Governor Mike DeWin stated the vinyl chloride contents of five rail cars are currently unstable and could potentially explode, causing deadly disbursement of shrapnel and toxic fumes into the surrounding area. As a result, all residents in a one by two mile radius were told to evacuate the surrounding area of the train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. It was stated that a town of nearly 5,000 people were told to evacuate or faced arrest. And normally guys, I'm against arrest or detention of any kind unless it's for a violent crime. But this time I actually agree with the corrupt politicians, including the corrupt mayor, because if you stayed, being arrested would be the least of your worries. You would probably be dead long before they could arrest you. Anyway, later that day they conducted the controlled release of the toxic material. As you can see, it looks like somebody detonated a fat man in Ohio. During the controlled release of the chemicals, the burns were so thick that it was even picked up by satellites and that's absolutely crazy guys. By Monday, the Norfolk Southern Railroad Company that is responsible for this whole disaster came out and claimed the controlled release had been completed successfully. And how ironic. It is so American that the company responsible for the disaster is also the one responsible for the post-disaster evaluation. And the sad part is most of the politicians are in on it, Democrat and Republican. They're all in on it and they'll play defense for the company because surprise, surprise, some of the politicians are quite literally paid by the railroad company. By Wednesday, you had a representative for the EPA saying they're collecting air and water samples of the surrounding area and so far, all readings they have collected have been at normal concentrations and backgrounds of what you would find in almost any community. The mayor also reiterated that all evacuees can return home and he went on to say that the air quality samples in the area of the wreckage in nearby residential neighborhoods have consistently showed readings at points below safely screening levels for contaminants of concern. And let me take a second to tell you that the mayor is full of shit. The EPA is full of shit. Norfolk Southern Railroad Company is most definitely full of shit. And the sad thing is, in the days since the disaster, we have seen a lot of unverified sources coming out and saying their livestock dock is getting sick and dying. We've had reports of dead fish in nearby waterways. 
We've even had the EPA come out and say some of the chemicals that seeped into the nearby waterways were immediately toxic to fish. But the EPA also claims that they have taken actions to minimize that. And to be honest, if the chemicals are immediately toxic to fish, I don't understand what actions you could really take to minimize that because if the chemicals are immediately toxic to the fish, it sounds like no matter what, the EPA is always going to be a day late and a dollar short on that front. So while the EPA and Norfolk Southern Railroad Company are lying to you, we've even had several experts come out in days since that say that any residual chemical emissions do pose a danger to the people and the surrounding area. And think about it, it's common sense. What goes up must come down. You can't just burn toxic material and expect it to dissipate in the air or float off in space. That toxic material eventually comes back down to earth. Usually toxic material takes a long time to dissipate also. That's why we have things like hazardous waste sites and depending on the material it is, Think about it, some hazardous material takes years to dissipate. And that's why normally when you see people dealing with hazardous material, you see people wearing hazmat suits from top to bottom. So after the train derailment took place and they did the controlled release, Norfolk Southern came out and they wanted to take responsibility for the situation by offering to cut the town a check for $25,000. And the sad part is, when you do the math, there are 5,000 people that lived in that town. So that's only $5 a person. And this tweet from More Perfect Union goes on to say that this is all from a company that's worth $55 billion. Now, following a disaster like this, one has to ask herself, is there a way we could have prevented this? What policy changes led to an environment where there are no countermeasures for trains carrying this level of hazardous material? Well, in the wake of this disaster, it has come out that rail companies, including Norfolk Southern, block safety rules before the Ohio train derailment. So this article from The Lever goes on to state, and I quote, Norfolk Southern helped convince government officials to repeal break rules and corporate lobbyists watered down hazmat safety regulations. Before this weekend's fiery Norfolk Southern train derailment prompted an emergency evacuation in Ohio, the company helped kill federal safety rules aimed at helping the rail industry's Civil War era braking systems, according to documents reviewed by The Lever. The article goes on to state, Though the company's 150-car train in Ohio reportedly burst into 100-foot flames upon derailing and was transporting material that triggered a fireball when it was released and incinerated, it was not being regulated as a high hazard flammable train, federal officials told the lever. Documents show that when current transportation safety rules were first created, a federal agency sided with industry lobbyists and limited regulations governing the transportation of hazardous compounds. The decision effectively exempted many trains hauling dangerous material, including the one in Ohio from the high hazard classification and its more stringent safety requirements. Now the sad thing about this is Republicans and Democrats are both in on this together. You have to wonder, why aren't Republicans hitting Joe Biden on this issue? This would be an easy layup issue for them to hit Joe Biden on, but they're not doing it. And throughout the inception of our political ecosphere, you see Republicans and Democrats fight over stupid shit. But here's a legitimate issue that they actually should be fighting over, yet they're not doing it. And usually when you see Democrats and Republicans not fighting over legitimate issues that should be easy layup issues for them, it's because they're probably in on it together and they're either A, agreeing to do policies that screw over the American people like cutting Social Security and Medicare, 
are B. They have taken money from whatever corporation is involved in the wrongdoing. In this case, it's the railroad industry. Now, during the Obama administration, there were a series of train derailments. One train in particular was carrying the same hazardous material that this train was carrying. Obama came up with a rule proposal at the Department of Transportation to start better regulating trains carrying hazardous material. The proposal would have included disclosure requirements so you know what kind of material is moving through your neighborhood, fortification requirements to better fortify trains carrying hazardous material, a speed regulation so trains carrying hazardous material aren't just flying through your residential neighborhoods and an electronic braking system because the braking system that we currently have is from the Civil War era. So after that proposal was drafted, the chemical industry railroad lobbyist people came to the Obama administration and they said they don't want to have to deal with all these regulations. They want the scope to be much narrower and the Obama administration sided with the lobbyists and they narrowed the rules to the point where the mandate would only apply to very, very large oil trains. But the mandate did pass nonetheless with the goal of eventually making it the industry standard. Fast forward to Trump, then Trump gets elected, then the American Association of Railroads start pushing Senate Republicans towards repealing the brake mandate even though the mandate is only put on a very limited number of trains. They don't want any of the regulations because in their mind, this is just the catalyst and a little bit of regulations eventually lead to more regulations. It's the same reason you don't see any gun reform in America. Not that I want any gun reform, but if you're a crazy motherfucker, hey, maybe you shouldn't have any guns. So the American Association of Railroads ultimately pushed Republicans in the Trump administration to repeal the railroad brake mandate. So now the industry is under no mandates at all to use a better braking system. Fast forward to the Biden administration. Biden had the power to bring back the mandate and maybe even push through the original regulations for trains carrying hazardous material to have this electronic braking system. And the railroad industry themselves even came out and said, Oh yeah, the electronic braking system does minimize major disasters. But alas, Biden did not do it. So here we are. So in the wake of the disaster, many residents have returned to their homes since the government is claiming that it is safe to do so. Many residents have reported nausea, headaches, vomiting, and burning eyes. Many residents say the air smells like chlorine, burning tires are formaldehyde, and there's also been several people tweeting out pictures of affected waterways full of dead fish and waterways that have this weird tint and weird consistency. So this is where we are folks. I'm not by no means a journalist. But we don't have any real journalist in America and nobody's reporting the truth. And mainstream media is so full of shit. It's like Fox News is just doing Republican propaganda while MSNBC is doing Democratic propaganda and CNN is just doing propaganda in general. And so if you live in East Palestine, Ohio, I advise you get far away from that place. Anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in. Please have a wonderful day and be safe out there. We just saw in the middle of the country a giant chemical fireball, 100 foot flames, and very few people asking questions about what led up to this. So there was a derailment in 2012 in New Jersey. Releasing 20,000 gallons of dangerous chemicals and noxious gas into the air. There's children in the town that are being affected by this. And there was pressure on regulators to do something about those kinds of trains. And so the Obama administration had a rule proposed to better regulate these trains.
trains. The National Transportation Safety Board told the regulatory agency, said, listen, these regulations should broadly cover not just oil, they should cover what's known as class two chemicals. And the chemical industry lobbyists went to work pressuring the regulatory agency to limit the definition of what a high hazard flammable train is. Limit it in a way that the train in Ohio, that kind of train ended up not being classified as a high hazard flammable train. The NTSB closely monitoring four cars that are filled with vinyl chloride. It has been found to be linked to cancer. Trains that were subject to this rule were going to be required to use a special kind of new braking system to try to deter or at least reduce the damage from derailments. ECP delivers the unmatched performance of air brakes with the precision of electronic communications. Most trains in the country are still using technology from the Civil War era, but the moment the government was considering making it a mandate. The railroad industry's changed its tune. It cited cost concerns to pressure against that rule. We want to see federal regulations when they're necessary, not just uh, in reaction to a headline in the, in, in the Washington Post. Obama's rule included that measure to expand the larger use of those brakes on the nation's rail system. But in that 2016 election year, the Republican Party got about $6 million from the rail industry. And Senate Republicans started beating the drum for Trump to repeal the rule. Donald Trump repealed the brake rule so that the industry does not have to even start to use these kinds of brakes. One former Federal Railroad Administration regulator told us that these brakes, which are known as ECP brakes, would have mitigated a disaster like this. And we just learned today, after the publication of our story, federal officials told us that this train did not have those brakes on the train.